We're back on shift inside the ambulance. Hello, Black Country. Hey. We're back. Go, 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 go. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Oh. Where about in your belly is a pain. Does it look bad to you? As they face more heart-pounding action. I can't chest all me. Clear. Everyone clear. clear. And more medical emergencies. Right. Okay, we've got some good respiratory effort there. Battling over 4,000 calls each day. Look at them melting. Don't cry, darling. I've had enough, you know. Look at that. <coughs> there are some new faces. <laughs> Can I wear the team chains? Pretty please. And some old friends. I love you, John Stevens. No, you don't. Yes, I do. My life has been positively dead without you. Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Can we come in and have a chat? Have you got a favourite teddy you want to take with you? I'm going to need to shave you. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. Oh, oh, my oh, my God. God. We'll need to call security for these pair. They've been nothing but trouble. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews as we take you inside the ambulance. Look, you go. To the wild blue yonder. Right then, you ready? Mmm. Love a chocolate cake right now. Give me a gatto. Sports, I was about to say, Whoa. sports spell the cake, Doctor. What? Block those gatto. Pop stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that's some German. And they're out to order a point and out to order Black Forest Cato. Glockenspiel. Big slice. That's it. That's all I know. The best thing I can say in Scottish is, I can't even speak Squatish. <laughs> I'm rubbish at accents, though. Honestly, they all sound the same. I'm happy with mine. I like my accent. I just can't do them. The only accent I, I can do is my own. And we don't even know what that is, really. No, no. <laughs> It's a cold, wet day in the West Midlands, and paramedics Hannah Meredith and Aaron Campbell are looking forward to the end of their shift. I'm out of a bath today. Hot bath. <laughs> With my new pillows, I may add. A bath with your new pillows? You're ruining No one likes a soggy pillow. Yeah. The crew have just been alerted to their next patient, a 43-year-old man. The symptoms sound serious, and Aaron and Hannah get to the man's house as quickly as they can. Are you right? The patient's wife lets the ambulance team inside. Yes. Okay. All right, mate. I'm Aaron, this is Hannah. What do we call you? Jefferson. Jefferson is the father of four young children. He's conscious, but in a lot of pain. What, what's happened today, then, while we're on the floor? I woke up on Saturday morning. Saturday morning. In a serious pain. Mm-hmm. In a serious pain. Like this. OK. What's different now? It's worse. getting worse. It's worse. OK, what have you taken for it? It's inside that package. So have you been prescribed these by the doctor, then, have you? Yeah, I went to a pharmacy. When did you start taking these Kokodomo? Long time ago, because I have great memories about one or two years ago. Mm-hmm. Given Jefferson's medical history, the crew need to try and work out quickly what might be causing his intense stomach pain. Any pain anywhere else apart from your stomach at the moment? My stomach is up to Jeff. Of course. I cannot eat. Okay, what, you throw it straight back up there. When you were lying down on the floor on your belly, did that make it better? Do you feel bloated? Yes. I do. I'm going to tap now, all right. Cool. Any trouble with your heart normally? Any heart attacks or anything like that? Yeah. Okay. What's that mean? Just your heart tracing. How is it? Um, 
regular. Yeah, it is very regular on this palpation, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. What we're going to do is pop some more stickers in your chest, all right, and have a, a better look at your heart. I need you to keep really still for me. Just relax, no talking, no moving. Third blood pressure, 200 over 114. All of um, Jefferson's checks that we were doing, his uh, basic observations were uh, a bit out of, uh, out of the normal parameters. His um, pulse was very irregular and his um, blood pressure was through the roof. Um, those two in combination leave him very, very open, very, very high risk to uh, things like strokes and heart attacks. We're going to have to take you to hospital. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> What's, what's frightening you? Talk to me. You don't, you don't have to come to hospital, all right, but it's the quickest way of getting you fixed and getting you feeling better, yeah? Are you sick? Why? Why are you sick? Well, that's the other reason we need to go. I can't see inside your tummy. Yeah. That burns. It's not burns, it's injections. OK. Somewhere you've been in hospital before. What did they inject? No, no. I was three months unconscious. Oh, because of your hemorrhage. You're a very lucky man, aren't you? Jefferson once had a job in construction, but he's been unable to work since his devastating brain hemorrhage a year and a half ago. So ever since you've come out, you've been a bit, a bit afraid of hospitals, have you? Yeah? Listen, listen, look at me. You're not unconscious now, are you? Yeah? You're talking to me. Before we go anywhere, we need you to calm down, cos... Okay. You're not going to help your stomach pain if you're upset, are you? Yeah. Listen, sometimes we just get sick, don't we? Can't we say it's all? It's too much. I really felt for Jefferson. Um, the last time he was in hospital, he was in a coma for three months. Um, and that's obviously left him with um, some emotional scars. The fact that he was getting agitated and, and more emotional about the current situation really wasn't doing any favours for his blood pressure. And it was really important that we calmed him down and, and tried to keep him as, as sort of stressless as possible um, in order to keep his blood pressure as low as we could. Come on, pop yourself on the bed up there for me. <laughs> Listen, it's really, really, really important that you calm down. All right. <laughs> Not again. It's different from last time. Different from last time. <laughs> this is how they took me when I went to the hospital. I get collapsed. Three balls of Okay. Not but you're not right? unconscious today, are you? You were obviously very sick then, weren't you? Hey. What have I done wrong? You haven't done anything wrong. Sometimes we're just unlucky. OK, I'm going to pop a needle in your arm again, OK? Chat scratch. Wow. This one's hot. I have to get you this pain relief. Fast-acting intravenous paracetamol should help manage Jefferson's pain. Fifteen minutes into the journey, he seems much more relaxed. How's your pain now? Just a day. Yeah? Maybe less. That, that person was not yeah. going to take it away completely. Yeah, I was hospitalised in New Cross, and they started flying me with helicopter to open a little bit for operation. Yeah. Because I bleed in the brain. Yeah. Did it, what caused it? I don't know. That's really scary. They say when I was at New Cross Hospital, after about two hours, I passed away. Wow. Did you see any mark in my neck? Like a scratch. See? Oh, yeah, yeah, a little tiny one there. Is that where they went in? Is that it? Yes. It's just shunting. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's pretty smart what they can do, isn't it? You're a bit more relaxed now, aren't you? Yeah. 
Good. <laughs> How long have we been together? Together? Yeah. What, like as a couple? Couple, yeah. We're not? You're not? <laughs> no. Sure. It's a new one. <laughs> it's a new one. Yeah. Your first day of working together? Yeah, we're just friends at work. Oh, we mean this home. Oh, oh you together. mean that we work together? <laughs> yeah, how long? Like, oh, um, we've known, what, two, two and a bit years? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. saw it, yeah. I saw the friendship is long. <laughs> No, we're not getting married or anything like that. <laughs> Are you married? No. And he's not married? No. In hospital, Jefferson will have the treatment he needs to stabilise his blood pressure and investigate the cause of his pain. Jefferson was very anxious. He was. Yeah. And that was contributing to a lot of his symptoms. I'm not surprising, really. I mean, the last time that, that man went in an ambulance, he was in a coma for three months. Yeah, that, that's woke not... woke up in a different hospital. It's not really something that you want to go back into hospital and have reminders about, is it? Absolutely not. Oh, no, I hate to. <gasps> get out of the truck. Get out. So I don't know why. I've always wanted to try Lap Sang Zuchong. Just because it's got such a funky name. But those Londoners uh, drink it, don't they? Of course. With their falafel on sourdough. Falafel. <laughs> <laughs> It's an early spring day, and ambulance crew John Ostrowski and Donna Parcell have just received information about a sick patient. And we are going to <coughs> Phoenix Walking Centre for a chest tightness, raised blood pressure, suspected heart attack. 64 year old female presented to the out of hours doctors. As it's a suspected heart attack, every second counts. <laughs> Nurse practitioner Ed Donkersley raised the alarm after the patient was brought in by her husband, Terry. Hi, dear. Hi. 64-year-old lady that's had an ongoing cough now for a good uh, two to three months. Um, over the last couple of days, she's developed a band of tightness across her chest, but the pain also radiating to the neck. Um, ECG. We have got uh, an axis deviation. I've given okay. her 300 of aspirin. I was just debating whether to give some GTN. Her blood pressure's going to take it, 183 over yeah. 103. Do you normally suffer high blood pressure? Yeah. You do? Are you on tablets for it? Yes, yeah. Did you want to...? Go for the GTM before you get to the truck, or...? Yeah, I can, can try it, yeah. Give us some now. Do any harm, that's for sure. GTN spray is a fast-acting medicine for chest pain. So, pull to the roof of your mouth. Open wide. It gives temporary relief to patients suffering with angina. Ready for the next one? How's that feeling there? It's easy, Natalia. Around here. Okay. Should we get your coat on? That spray can play havoc with your blood pressure, OK? Oh, right. So oh, just take it right. nice and steady. So bring your legs around first and then sit there, see how you feel. If you start to feel dizzy, then you let us know, OK? The tightness in Vivian's chest alongside her high blood pressure means she needs to be seen in hospital. I think that's an interesting thing. <laughs> This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Right, just pop this back on your arm if I can. Yeah. And what we're going to do, we're going to pop Cold those dots. Cold. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Cold hands, warm heart. That's it. We'll um, gonna go do another again. ECG on you on our monitor as well, if that's all right. Yeah. 
How long have you had the pain altogether? Well, the tightness in the chest, I suppose, is from, from the beginning of the week. So if There's you've had it... pain in my back is like the last 48 hours. OK. So after you had your spray yeah. in your mouth, did it change yeah, the pain at all? The, the, not the back pain, the front pain. Did you suffer anxiety at all? Oh, I did. No, no. What about stress? I should be chilled. I'm retiring in 10 days. Oh, right. Oh. So I've got a big party plan this week. No. <laughs> You will be well for that party. Yes, yes. Don't you worry. There you go. What are you thinking? Looks pretty good. Thinking muscular. And the coffin. Possibly. So that's everything they're really good. Aren't they? So I wonder if it's a bit of a red herring with the Yeah. The GTN helping. With its card, yeah. Mm. Vivian presented at the walk-in centre with some back pain, arm pain and jaw pain. Also, worryingly, she had some chest tightness as well. We gave her some GTN spray, which helped with that pain. Uh, so we were wondering whether it was a cardiac issue. Whatever was causing her pain, I wanted to make sure she was comfortable on the way to hospital, so I gave her some pain relief. Would you like to try some gas and air? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seal. That's it. That's it. How's that? I think what's going to happen, you'll have some more ECGs and some more tests, and they'll take some bloods. They'll check yeah. your bloods, make sure there's nothing going on with Just your heart. The... As they near the hospital, Vivienne's pain seems to be easing. Had you got much planned for today? Season ticket holders, so we're going to go to the game. I'll cover the, the Wolves games. Not very often anymore, though. I do like to go and watch them as well, so oh, I can work, get paid my overtime. Oh, I'm watching oh, the Wolves at the same time. Yeah, like at the it. side of the pitch. So. Yeah. We're here now. Vivian will be seen by the cardiac team, who can quickly assess her chest pain. She was lovely, wasn't she? Oh, bit she of a just. mystery, though, because there was a bit of everything going on, wasn't there? There was. I mean, to listen to her symptoms, it sounded really muscular. Yeah, yeah. but then she got this tightness across yeah. the chest, which... The GTN helped. Which is really which strange. Which is cardiac related, maybe. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So maybe there's two different things. She retires in 10 days. She's got a big party. Oh, has she? Yeah. So I said, you will she have recovered. You will go to the ball. By the time <laughs> your party arrives. If you were a Spice Girl, which Spice Girl would you be? Oh, I don't know. Um, I've got um, I've got Sporty Spices plaid. I've got a hairstyle, I, I think. You do, but then I, I don't feel like that's your personality. I'm not sporty. Yeah. I am not sporty at all. <laughs> um, you're younger than me, so I think you'd have to be Baby Spice. Could, yeah, I could be that. But then I'm not posh, and I'm not really You're scary. Not really, yeah. Who does that leave? Jerry? Jerry, I suppose you'd have to be I'd Jerry. I'd have to be Jerry. Quite like a union flag dress, so that's true. Paramedic Dan Crutchley and technician Alex Temink have just received their next job. 18-year-old male, fallen with a leg injury. Injury above the knee. Alex used to be a horse stunt rider in the movies before retraining with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. So it's just on this road at the top. Yeah, they're, they're coming out to wave at us. The address they've been called to is just a few miles away. 
Right. You're right. He's just told us he's lost Bill and in his foot. Okay, well, we'll have a look at him. You're right. I'm Alex, this is Dan. Hello. You're Jack, are you? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so what happened? Well, by the way, he went in the garden and yeah. he came through the door. Yeah. He slipped because obviously it's wet and his legs just gone like that. Okay. Bent. Where exactly is it hurting? Mm. Your lower leg. Under, under okay. To Up to there. All right. Can you move your toes at all? To be honest, mate, I can't really move a lot on my feet because I can't, I've got no feeling in my foot whatsoever. Okay. Can you straighten it at all? No. Can't straighten honest. from your knee? No. I, I've, we've tried doing okay. all this before you got here. Okay. Can you feel me touching it? Painful there yeah, in the back, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can feel that. Oh. All right. Okay. We went to our patient, um, a chap named Jack, who'd fallen in quite an awkward position, wrapped around the door frame, um, half into the hallway, half in the kitchen. So we had to negotiate quite a narrow space with his friends helping him as well, uh, so that we could assess what injuries we were dealing with. Um, right, you're not in the most comfortable positions, are you? Um, we could do with kind of exposing your leg, but because of the way you're you are in the pain you're in, we're going to need to uh, cut your trousers off. Yeah. You right with that? Yeah. I'll sew them back up for you, Jack. I'll try. Right. Yeah, I'll pick up some pants on. Yeah, did, I, what, did I pull them on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you did. Too late there for that. You've got pants on, don't worry. Dignity intact, Jack's happy for Alex to examine his leg properly. All right, so... So you can feel me touching down here, can you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's painful mm. under there as well, just right under there. Yeah. What, in the back there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like that tendon's gone into spasm, really. Get the antinox in yeah, there, relax that. Yeah, we can try that. some gas in it and see if that makes oh, any God, that difference. Take that, try and keep your leg nice and steady. Do you want to give it one last try to see if you can get it any straighter or see if you can move it over? Because that will make it more comfortable for you for us to splint it. If you come out of the way, if he's able to put his legs yeah, closer yeah. together a little bit, then... Oh, so you you know, know, so when you move do you know when I'm moving it that way, I'm getting a really bad pile up right by my hip? Here. Just the one. Mm -hmm. just... one of us hold the leg up slightly, the other one slide it under, and we'll just have to try and splint it as best as we can in the position it's in, won't we? Yeah. You ready? Yep. That's it. I'm just going to try and pull it as high up as I can now, all right? Right, tell me if it hurts. I'm going to try and push these as close together as I can. Mm -hmm. Is that painful? Yeah. Should we try it a bit more? We're nearly there. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Right, so, one, three, one, two, three, lift. Oh, you're not light, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, getting more painful now, to be honest, mate. Perfect. Okay, and it just bumps as it clunks into lock. Oh. Now on the ambulance, Dan wants to give Jack some intravenous paracetamol. One, two, Three, shot, scratch. You're going to feel every bump and bounce, unfortunately. When all was dizzy, all of a sudden, I felt like I was going to pass Your out. Your heart rate shit. started to race a bit. Yeah, you? yeah. <laughs> My heart wore that clever, to be fair, before. Yeah. So I had problems with my heart, really bad problems a bit, and I was um, I was given, like, a 24-hour heart read, so I had to clip it to my trousers and have, like, wired up and I had to sleep with it on. Yeah. Just to keep track of where my heart was going and that. And then ever since I've had all that done and all my checks on, I've been fine. There's nothing, really, that's come up to show if there's anything wrong with it. Yeah, there's nothing showing up, in it? No, no, that's what I mean. I'm normally fit and well. I'm going to take these bits and pieces off you. Yeah. Right, OK, going to be some bumps as we go down. That's fine, mate. Jack will have his leg x-rayed in hospital to see whether it's fractured or badly sprained.
You sure you don't want one? No, I don't want an olive. Why? They're Ooh. vile. They're not vile. New assignment. How could anyone not like olives? Mmm. Taste of penicillin. I don't care for penicillin. I do. Mm-mm. They're beautiful. Do you remember the days of Freezer Centre in Compton? Yes. I used to go in there and they had the big bowls of olives. Right. And I used to pretend like I was going to buy them and I'd be tasting them all. <laughs> it's called stealing that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> It's lunchtime, and paramedic John Ostrowski is back on shift with crewmate Jamie Busby. Oh, new one. New oh, God. Cat 2 CVA. 94-year-old male. Query CVA. <coughs> on set within last five hours. OK. The man is reported to have had a CVA, or cerebrovascular accident, a stroke. Well, this is fun. Yep, it's a bit of chaos. It just, just drive at me, mate. It's fine. <laughs> so, so odd chap, 94. Victor. Yeah, it's so a proper old school name. Isn't it, it? You don't get many Victors these days, do no. you? And we're not blocking anybody in. Victor lives alone in a care-assisted flat. His daughter Valerie has come to be with him. Hello. Hello there. Thank you, buddy. Where are we? Hello there. Hello, sir. Yeah. Lovely. All right, Vic, I'm John. This is Jamie. An on-call doctor visited earlier in the day. Thursday, I felt really poorly. No energy, total exhaustion, total exhaustion. Yeah. But this morning, when I woke up, I can't lift this arm up, you say. I can't lift okay. it. OK. I can do it from the elbow. But you've got no strength from your shoulder? No, I can't. Arm weakness can be a key sign that a person has had a stroke. Right, Vic, can you do me a favour then? If you just squeeze my hands as tight as you can, don't be afraid to hurt. Go on, go for it. Go on, tighter. Both sides. OK, now, if I come just in front of you. Right. Can you give me a smile? Show me all your teeth. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. The doctor's obviously concerned that you've potentially had a bit of a stroke. Mm. So. We'll pop you down to A and E. Let me have a look at you. We did a fast test on him, uh, which is where we we test face, arms, and speech uh, for any problems. And although he was able to do the arm test, he was able to squeeze and push and pull really well. We did note that he got a weakness between his right shoulder and his elbow. So although it wasn't fast positive in the typical sense, he certainly was still fast positive. We needed to get Vic over to the hospital as quickly as we could uh, to make sure that. Uh, but it was investigated and dealt with if it was indeed a stroke. Right. OK, then, Vic, what we need to do is get into that there wheel barrage. Either hand. <laughs> right, if you turn towards me, Vic. It's a bit low. Keep a hold of my arm, if you wish. Yeah, I do. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, That's I don't know. it. Yeah. There you go. Rest there back. There we go. Touch oh, down. Right. Oh, I'm with sunglasses on, Val. You want your sunglasses on? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? No, I'm only joking. No. Oh, fuck. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three, hop. Oh. Oh, Beautiful. It, right. All right? You catch you ready to swing your legs up? Would you need a hand? Oh, I might be able to do it. You might be able to do it. As Vic is settled onto the ambulance, John spots a new symptom. Got a bit of a bluey tinge to your lip. Is that normal for you? Do you know? No. It's a very worrying sign for us because it generally indicates that there's not enough oxygen being circulated around the body. We were about to intervene and give him some oxygen when actually it resolved itself. It could be that there was something else going on as well, um, which a slight exertion of moving from chair to bed uh, was enough just to make him struggle a little bit more, but uh, it needed to be investigated as well. Right, what I'm going to do then is going to have a quick word with uh, the stroke nurse at the hospital, let them know. All right, um, and then we'll we'll get you there, okay? Okay, you get me straight to the stroke. Please. That's the, that's the aim. Oh, 
Oh, hello there. It's John, one of the paramedics here. I am bringing you a lovely 94-year-old gentleman uh, who has fast positive for his right arm since 8 o'clock this morning. He's got um, reduced range of movement, but no history of trauma. Yeah, we'll be around about uh, 15. Thank you. Bye now. Right. They are going to meet you in the A&E department, OK? The, the stroke nurse. So that's good. Yeah. We're happy with that. No problem at all. During the journey, Vic's pain gets worse. So where's this pain at the moment? It's just, it's just, oh, it's awful pain. Oh, when I try, when I try to move it. Mm. Oh, the whole area of my shoulder. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. But you've no. not hit it in any way. I think it's a bit worse now than it was. Okay. No pain though when I'm pressing on it. No, no, no. No, it's all internal. Yeah. We're turning into the grasshopper grounds now. We are indeed. Vic will be met by the stroke team at the hospital. OK, right, Vic. All right, couple of bumps as we go. The team will work quickly to establish if Vic has had a stroke or if there's another issue causing his shoulder pain. It was a, an odd presentation. He was. I mean, the thing with the fast test is it doesn't state that it's got to be Weakness. the whole arm. No. Or you know, anything like that. So, has he got an arm weakness? Yeah, yeah, he has. Yeah. It just isn't at that part. No. It's, it's, it's that the same as it. You treat for the worst case, hope for the best. Absolutely. It's a bit of a grey day in the West Midlands. Still misty up here? Yeah. It didn't really lift it all day, has it? Paramedics Rebecca Piddock and V Hodgkins are nearing the end of another busy shift. Oh, we're in the home straight anyway. Last mm -hmm. three hours back, home straight, home straight. But before they can clock off, an emergency call comes in. Right, it's category one, 75-year-old um, lady. She's unconscious. A Category 1 call means the patient's condition is considered life-threatening. Nearly there. Holding on the left here, so it's going to be one of these here, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine. Dot, the patient's neighbour and good friend, is waiting for the ambulance crew. Oh, right, OK. Ray is the husband of the patient, 75-year-old Josie. Hello, Ray. It's the ambulance Hello. service. Hello. All right, Hi. if you can let us in to uh, Josie. Yes, That's it. Where is she? <coughs> OK. Right. What's happened, Ray? Well, I'm not quite sure. OK. Josie, yeah? She's not unconscious. Oh. Hello. Fast positive, though, Hello. by the look of it, guys. Right, just... Josie. Hello. It's the paramedics. Ray, is she diabetic? Yeah. OK. So how long has she been like this for? I've no idea. I got up about 3 o'clock. Yeah? And she was asleep when I said... She was asleep, OK. I just had to then wake her up. Josie? You all right? OK, we're going to do with your blood sugars and we're going to do your... Are the checks on you? The target blood sugar reading for a diabetic is between four and seven. Blood sugar's low then, Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2.3 is too low. Josie, I'm going to put a needle in you and give you some sugar to bring your blood sugar up. OK, darling? Because you're quite, uh, quite groggy, aren't you? <clears throat> and when did she last have a low blood sugar like this? 
12 Has it? OK. <laughs> All right. When we got there, she was quite groggy, not um, as alert as normal. Um, that must have been quite scary for her, her husband and for her friend to see her that way. Um, it was important that we got some intravenous glucose into her, directly into her vein, um, as low blood sugars can be potentially very dangerous and she was at high risk of going unconscious again or potentially even worse. All right, Josie, my darling. All right, Josie. Do you want a good bingo? <laughs> Should we go to bingo? All right then. This is your glucose. V is giving Josie 100 millilitres of glucose fluid. And after just one minute, the effect is starting to show. All right, Jos. Yes. <coughs> That's it, yeah, that face. Right, check your blood sugar again here, OK? <laughs> Seven point eight. Right, blood sugar's up then. The crew have managed to stabilise Josie's sugar levels. I need you to sit nice and still for me. Now they can fully check her over, and they find something else worrying. It looks like a left bundle in the sense of this, but it's just such a poor trace. When we were assessing Josie, um, we performed an ECG and that showed that Josie got an irregular heartbeat. It was quite important to get her to hospital to find out whether this irregular heartbeat had been caused by her blood sugar levels or not. Um, and that kind of overtook the low blood sugars that we'd already treated as a priority. When we're looking at your pulse and your heart on, your, on our ECG, you've got what we call an irregular heartbeat. Mm. OK. And I'm just concerned that that might be a new thing. And, and in which case, although we've treated the reason we were here, yeah. I want to take pop you up to A&E and get some blood tests done just to make sure okay. that everything's, everything works on a very fine balance, yeah? Any slight change can cause all sorts. Right then, let's get you on this ambulance. Josie's husband, Ray, who isn't very mobile, will stay at home. Well, you're looking a better colour than when we first saw you. So Dot, Josie's friend of 65 years, goes with her instead. Open this. Ooh. Right, Dot, that's you there, in, all right? I bet you had put my thugs in the bed, though. I've got none. <laughs> <laughs> right you should tell you that you did. It depends, because obviously we can get a job right up until the finish time, yeah, so... It's the nature of the job, isn't it, you know, so... And do you enjoy it? I love it. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's nice. I do. When we meet the likes of people like yourself and Josie, when she's awake, that's the pleasurable part of the job, especially that's to make people feel better as well, you know. That's Just put my hand there, it's going to count your breathing, OK? Lovely. Blue lights, Richard. No! <laughs> we ain't got the blue lights on, you know. So you want a fiver at the bingo dot, yeah? Have you spent it already? We have to share it. You shared it? Oh, you have to share it as well. Do you know, I was going to say, have you ever had a big win? Yeah. Yeah, upon about 12 months ago, and you won, up, you won about 400, didn't you? Oh, right, OK. We have seen nothing. Since, <laughs> obviously, we've done some jobs over the years in, in Bingo Hall. Yeah, it's terrible. Know. It's terrible. No. Well, you're trying to do your job. Still and they're all... Yeah, and they're all... Yeah, they're still playing. I know. They're still playing. They could be dead. I know, I know. <laughs> Because I've said that, if anything happens to me, you stop playing me. <laughs> right, so we're going to take you in on the stretcher, OK? You can take me back, Doc. Yes. There's no money you need, but still. We'll need to call security for these pair. <laughs> They've been nothing but trouble. <laughs> Come on, then, Dot. Ooh. <laughs> right, we're going to wait in there in the warmth. Right, then. They've been nothing, honestly, the trouble they've given me on the back of this ambulance. <laughs> I nearly had to press the emergency button three times. Oh, it's cold, Doctors will closely monitor Josie 
to make sure her blood sugars remain stable and to investigate her irregular heartbeat. <laughs> Weren't they a pair of characters? I oh, really like them. <laughs> Once we treated Josie's low blood sugar and she come round, a character, uh, she didn't stop laughing, would she? We're take, no, you're taking yeah. them to hospital and they're laughing? Yeah. As if it's like a ride out? To be honest, they're my favourite type of jobs anyway. I like yeah. high posts because we see such a vast improvement yeah. so quickly, you know, and just feel a bit warm and fuzzy. Yeah. And it's nice to finish yeah. on, a, on a nice on little a high. high like that. Despite multiple tests, doctors couldn't find the cause of Jefferson's stomach pain. He's had no more bouts since. He's now under the care of the neurology team and having regular appointments to make sure there are no signs of another brain hemorrhage. Tests at hospital were able to show conclusively that Vivian's back and chest pains were muscular and not cardiac related. She was discharged the same day. She made it to her retirement party and has since felt fine. Jack was x-rayed in hospital to check what injuries he sustained from his awkward fall. The x-rays came back clear of fractures, but his leg was badly sprained. Thorough tests showed that, thankfully, 94-year-old Vic had not had a stroke. The weakness and pain in his shoulder was actually caused by pneumonia. He was put on medication and is beginning to feel better. Seventy-five-year-old diabetic Josie was discharged from hospital the same day. Doctors are keeping an eye on her irregular heartbeat, though there's no cause for immediate concern. She's had no further incidents and is feeling normal again. If you could choose one person to, like, live the rest of your life with and you're the only two people in the world, who would it be? I'm going to go ahead and see you. Ah. Yeah. Thank you.